dear students and participants of the course on railway engineering now today we are going to talk about the aspects which were left in the previous lecture in the previous lecture we started with the buckling and when we talked about the hog rails and the batter rails the two more aspects we thought of discussing in the lecture were corrosion and the corrugation of rails and those are the two aspects which were not covered so today we will be taking up those particular aspects also along with the next thing which will come in, that is the rail failure and within the rail failure we will talk about the causes we will talk about the classification the location and the position of those rail failures let's see how much we are able to cover today considering all of these aspects starting with the corrosion and the rusting of the rails now in this case the corrosion is one aspect which is always going to be there when you are talking about a metal like a steel so here when you are talking about any such metal which can get corroded because of certain actions of chemicals or the actions of the environment in terms of moisture or climatic conditions which are prevailing for a longer period of time at any of the location there is always a possibility that the corrosion and the rusting may happen so this corrosion it is not caused so much by the dampness as by the acid gases which are dissolved in the film of moisture dampness is of course going to cause the corrosion but the gravity that is what we are talking here so if there are some acid gases which have got dissolved in the moisture and that moisture remains there for a longer period of time and it coats the rails that means at the top of the rail that moisture is coming so if we are talking about a rail section so this is the rail section which is being placed at the top of the sleeper and in this environment there is a moisture so finally all this moisture will be there on the top of this rail so there is a sort of a coating which will happen and in this coating if there are acids the fumes are there then this is further dangerous the corrosion is generally noticed on the web and foot of the rail so this is the web section and this one is the foot section so area which is being exposed that is one thing second thing is the thickness being provided here similarly the thickness being provided here as compared to the head section third the total area which is being exposed the surface area which is exposed that is also is having a problem so this is the area or the you can say these are the two areas which are going to be affected more corrosion is location specific and it can be heavy at certain locations so this is an important aspect again you may find that the, for the same rail section having the same mineral composition being placed on the similar type of the uh, sleepers with the fastenings it may not be corroded at one location but getting corroded at another location and if it is getting corroded at that particular location that we need to identify what are those specific factors which may be causing that corrosion so this is important aspect so let us talk about some locations which may be prone to the corrosion of a rail very first one the platform lines where the trains make prolonged halts see the train has been taken this is a platform and this one is a main line but there is a line on the back side where the buffer is provided 
and on this particular line the train may be stopped and may be kept in waiting to come on the main track for use. So, if this is a location where the train is being kept for a longer period of time then this may cause an issue. Similarly, even on the platform if say the train stays longer, the train is going to stay here for a 30 minutes and there are many such trains which happen uh, just stay there for such longer periods at this particular station. Then this section this is again liable or it is going to be getting affected in terms of a corrosion. The sidings where the saline or the corrosive goods are dealt with. Now as I said this is uh, one case another case is that this line can go to a location like this whereas it may be straight also and there can be further another track. So, these are sidings and say on this particular side we have a platform where the material is being either dumped means they had been taken out of the wagons or being placed on the wagons. So, here such sort of activities are going on and these activities will keep going for a longer period of time because we talk about a goods train it may be having something like 40 plus or 50 plus wagons. At this location if the goods which are being handled they are saline in nature or corrosive in nature then also there is a possibility that on these sidings the rails may get corroded. Then near water hydrants due to insufficient drainage. So, if you have this uh, track on which the train is going to stop for a longer period of time as we discussed, so there may be a requirement that there are water hydrants being provided here and then there can be another track on the other side and a platform on this side. So, this is platform number 1, this is platform number 2 and it can be platform number 3 on the other side. So, in between these two tracks the these water hydrants are provided so that if there is a requirement to fill the water in the bogies that can be done by using the same water hydrant which are placed in the central location. At this point when the water is being filled and then it is being the pipe has been taken out there is a possibility that water will get spilled on the surface and if at this location the good drain is not provided then this water which has been filled they, 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 it will not come to this drain it will remain there and this is also become a condition where the rusting will start and finally the rails may get corroded. Tunnels and deep cuttings specifically in the case of tunnels because it is a long tunnel which is provided and the track is being passing through it. So, if it is very long then whatever fumes are there, whatever humid conditions are there inside that that will not getting dissipated, it will remain there for a longer period of time. And because of those reasons in this area there is again a possibility of the corrosion or the rusting of the rails. Industrial belts for the obvious reasons as we talked here that there can be a possibility of handling saline or the corrosive goods. So, in the case of industrial belts what type of material is being held? what is being transported. So, there can be a issue in this case also. Now, the measurement of depth of corrosion this can be done as vertically and lateral direction and when we say that it means it is a reduction in the bottom flange width of the rail. So, when we have said that there is a web So, this is a flange width and it may happen that slowly and slowly it is getting into this form. It means either it is getting chopped off, it is broken or this corrosion has started infiltrating it. So, we have to identify whether up to this point it has happened or this or this point whatever is the extent with respect to the actual size of the foot of the rail here. It shall be done using the straight edge and the feeler gauge or any other suitable device at a fixed periodicity of once 
in a year on every 100 sleepers by removing the elastic rail clips and liners. These elastic rail clips and liners, they are basically the fastenings which are used for rail to sleeper connection. And when we are taking up the fastenings, we will be discussing about these types of uh, items there. What it says is that we can use any of the system can be a straight edge, can be a feeler gauge or can be any other such device where we can identify what is the amount of rusting which has happened. But periodically it has to be done at least once in a year and as a sample 100 sleepers needs to be removed and then examined that what has happened at that particular location. So, what is the prevention of this problem? One is the use of anti-corrosive paints. Now, these anti-corrosive paints, they can be the bituminous paints and these bituminous paints can be used on the new rails in the areas where there is a possibility of corrosion taking place. We have talked about number of areas where this type of a thing may happen. Another can be that we can go for the zinc metallization and this zinc metallization is done in the severe corrosion prone areas where things like the bituminous painting and these type of things may not be walkable then you have to go to further aspect. Then when we are going for this uh, zinc metallization then how it is to be done you have to prepare the surface. It is not that you have simply gone there and you have sprayed it and that zinc metallization has happened. And this surface preparation there are certain guidelines for it. What it says it should not be done when the ambient temperature is below 10 degree centigrade or above 50 degree centigrade in the rainy seasons that is in the during the night, in the winter before 8 am, in summer between 11 am to 3 pm or in the extremely windy, misty or dusty conditions. So, there are n number of conditions being written here. So, you have to look at the climatic conditions, you have to look at the temperatures, you have to look at the time in a day when that temperature is varying beyond certain limits. So, the, all of those combinations are being talked here. So, it is already said the temperature is below 10 or above 50 degree centigrade in terms of an ambient temperature. If it is a rainy season, there is any time when the rains can be there. So, at that time you should not go for it because whatever you do will get washed out during the night time, in the winters before 8 am or in the daytime when the temperatures are going to be very high. So, between 11 and 3 pm. Another way of doing it is a greasing and sealing of the liner contact area. And these liners as we discussed they are basically the fastenings which will come at an interface of a rail and a sleeper. So, at that bottom where the sleeper is provided and the top of that a rail is being placed. So, there will be a liner which is being embedded here. So, on the basis of the size the contact area of the liner will be there. What it says is in identified corrosion prone areas the rail liner seat should be greased using graphite grease IS408 1981 GRO that means grade O specification after the proper cleaning. So, there is a requirement of a greasing at this location and what type of grease is to be used is also being defined. The grease is also applied all around the liner. So, whatever this liner is being provided it can be in this shape or it can be in this shape also. So, that it takes up the fastenings. So, in this case it is applied all along whatever the shape is being provided here all round the liner and the rail foot on the gauge face side that is rail foot is this one this is foot and there is another rail on this side that means this is the area where the gauge G will be provided. So, that is this becomes the gauge side. 
Similarly, for another rail, this becomes the gauge side. So, on this particular side, we are doing it. And why we are doing it? Because on this particular side only, when we talk about a wagon which is uh, moving at the top of it, passenger wagon which has laboratories inside. So, there is a possibility that the open type of system it is being used then all that disc, uh, discrete will be coming at this particular location. So, so that is the problem and if that goes inside it will cause the corroding effect. So, we need to control this. Then rail fence and web should be kept free of the muck. So, this area as well as this area that has to be keep free of muck. So, periodical checks needs to be done and the cleanings has to be carried out. Then shifting of the liner locations, longitudinal shifting of the liner location from the sleeper seat can be done when the corrosion is less than 1.5 mm. So, there is a value being specified here now. So, when this can be done or when it cannot be done. The train watering arrangements shall be avoided on the runs through main lines as far as possible. Most of the time on the main lines, the trains are not going to stop for a longer period of time. So, there may not be a requirement of those watering arrangements, but yes, there are some acute conditions in which even in one particular passenger buggy, there is a requirement to fill the water. So, some such arrangements are always capped. As far as possible, if we can avoid these watering arrangement on the main line, then it will going to be more helpful. Proper drainage that has to be ensured. And not only on these particular main lines where the watering arrangements has to be has been done, but also in the case of yards or the station lines, including the washing lines where the trains are going to be washed and cleaned, or there are washable aprons, or train watering lines if they are being dedicated being defined at one particular location, at those cases the proper drainage shall be taken care of. So, this is also an important aspect. Then periodical cleaning of the rubbish that needs to be done and that has to be done in the goods shed siding lines. So, siding lines and the proper problems which may be faced in the siding lines we did talked about previously. Another way of doing with the working with this type of uh, conditions is to use a different type of a rail. So, here when we say different type of rail we are talking about the, the mineral compositions which have been incorporated here. So, one such is case is a copper molybdenum CUMO rail sections. So, in these particular areas where the corrosions are more, these are the corrosion resistant rail sections, it can be used. There can be another one that is nickel chromium copper rail. So, any of these two types of specific rail sections can also be used in those severe areas where the corrosion is severe. Now, these corrosion resistant attributes of these rails, they are account of the fact that they produce fine rust layer which inhibits ingress of moisture and chloride ions forming a protective layer all along the rail section. So, this is the mechanism which will be there when you are using these type of rail sections. Now, let us talk about another aspect that is corrugation of rails. Now, in the case of corrugation of rails, in the case center locations, the rail table, when we say rail table, we are talking about the surface on the head. It develops ridges and hollows. That means, if I talk about a top of the rail section, So, this type of a problem may come up. So, if this wavy pattern has got created, so if you look at in the photograph which is being shown on the right hand side, from this portion to this portion there are certain patches. If you see very minutely, there are dark and the light patches being shown here. On this section, there is no issue. It is a totally one type of a section. So, here the corrugations have happened in this particular patch and this is how they are looking. And that is where there will be the ridge 
or the hollow. Now, higher normal load operations more than 20 tons can lead to the development of the longer pitch corrugations on the running surface of the rail. What does that mean? When we see the pitch is going to be there, so this pitch we are talking that at what particular distance this high and low uh, levels are going to be there. So, when we are talking about these, this can increase if the loads are more than 20 tons which are coming at a location. The rail corrugations they occur when compressive stresses in the rail head at the contact point goes beyond the yield point and the plastic deformation of the rail top takes place which forms waves due to movement of trains and subsequent work hardening. What does that mean? So, we are talking about the occurrence of the compressive stresses on the rail head. So, the, the wheels are moving at the top of it but when the, these wheels moves, they are putting the pressure on the rail head. So, there is a contact area through which this is happening. Now, this particular pressure which is being exerted if it is gone beyond the strength characteristics of the rail section which is being used. So, if you have talked about the 52 kg per meter or 60 kg per meter, 90 or whatever rail section 70 to UTS, 90 UTS, 110 UTS rail section. So, depending on the strength characteristics, whatever the loads are coming, if they are going beyond the yield point, then there is a problem. And because of that high stress which is coming at a location, it is not being able to sustain, a plastic deformation may take place. And this plastic deformation when it happens, it means now it is not a hard surface, it is a bit plastic in nature which has a possibility of flow. So, as the wheel will move, it will create a wave and this wave will also move and that is the reason why these type of wavy patterns in terms of the ridges and the shallows will get created. So, this is an issue. Now, once the loads are there, not there, the rails are in a normal condition, the temperatures are normal. And for a long time, there is no such activity of the movement of the train at this particular track, then the hardening will take place and finally, you will find that this irregular surface at the top is going to be formed. Then the plastic flow of the rail material on account of the wheel rail contact stresses, it exceeds the material shakedown limit. And the combined vertical resonance of the wheel sets on spring masses and the track, this is also an aspect that you are talking about the rail, you are talking about the wheels and you are talking about the other masses which are there on the wheels. But you talk about in the case of uh, uh, very specifically for the steam engines or locomotives, various types of those type of uh, weights which were there, which were creating an impact. So, uh, here if there is a combined effect of all of these things together, so a resonance sort will get created and this resonance will work in the vertical direction and that will also create the corrugation. Now, when the corrugation has occurred, now how it is going to create a problem? Is it a problem or it is not a problem? That is what we are talking. So, what are the impacts? It increases the dynamic wheel loads and the vibrations. Obviously, vibrations are going to increase because the train wheel is moving at the top of this irregular surface. It will also cause uh, the resistances. If you remember the track resistances we did talk about, they were because of the track irregularities. And the dynamic wheel loads will also increase because these dynamic wheel loads, they are related with those type of impacts along with the speeds. There is an increase in the rate of deterioration of the track and the vehicle components. This is also a problem and that is where the higher maintenance activity will be required at this point and it will increase the cost. It will also be more periodical in nature. Now, this corrugation of rails, this is generally found in case of 72 UTS rail sections whose yield strength is lower for the movement of the locomotives and the box and wagons. So, depending on what type of uh, locomotives have been used, if you remember in the case of locomotives, we did talk about the axle loads, we did talk about uh, 
the total load of uh, a locomotive which is coming on the top of the rails and that was creating a uh, impacts in terms of the tractive effort or power which is required for a locomotive and this box and wagons which are again having weights and then the further weight will be there in terms of the material which is being placed inside it. So, gross weight we are talking here. So, all of these things they will make a problem in terms of the 72 UTS rail sections if they have been used. Then this corrugation varies in size and shape. We already said it is going to vary in terms of location and it may occur at irregular intervals. It may happen that at one location it was there then it is straight there is no problem. Then again it is happening. So, it may be some kilometers beyond, it may be some meters beyond and then you will find that it is a small distance and again that is happening. So, it is nothing like it is a fixed phenomena which is happening because it is a culmination of number of aspects which are contributing together. Now, factors which propagate corrugations are the metallurgy and the age of the rails. Age of the rails when we say we are talking about the service life of the rail. And this service life of the rail is being defined with respect to gross million tons uh, which a rail section can handle. So, if there is a high nitrogen content in the rails in terms of the metallurgical aspect, there may be a problem. The effect of oxidation at the time of rolling and straightening of the rails, if uh, this work is going on and then if there is a oxidation then this also may create some issue. Then physical and environmental conditions of the track. So, there can be a steep gradient here. So, when you talk about a steep gradient and the rail is being laid at the top of which the wheel is moving. So, so as to go at the top we have seen that the resistance which is being caused due to the gradient is very high. So, more power is required. So, it means it has to place more effort here so that it can move in the forward direction. So, there these particular locations may get this type of a system. Yielding formations, the overall system which is being provided at the bottom, the formation on top of that then ballast. So, if that formation itself is yielding then the track stability is a problem there. Long tunnels, there also it has been observed and the electrified sections also has been observed to have these type of a uh, corrugations, but the reason why exactly it happens is uh, not very clearly known. And train operations high speeds and the high axle loads we did talk about the axle load in terms of the 20 tons and more than 20 tons which are coming repeatedly on the rail section which is having a yield strength uh, which is not compatible with that. We have not used the high strength uh, rail section maybe 90 UTS or 110 UTS at that location. When the speeds are high then it is causing a impact in terms of the static loads getting transformed into dynamic loads and those dynamic loads are uh, sometimes maybe of uh, 70 percent higher, 50 percent higher, 40 percent higher depending on those speeds. Then starting locations of the trains when the train starts at a particular location say uh, at a platform. So, here again because of the inertial effect we did talk about the creep theory and we talked about that if uh, this happens below the wheel and it is going to start then it has to make a push so as to go ahead and at that location on the rail section if this is happening then there may be a possibility wherever these things will happen corrugations may appear. Locations where the brakes are applied to stop the train. So, these are the locations where the creeps are possible at the same time these are the locations where the corrugations can also come up. Atmospheric factors, high moisture content is specifically in the coastal areas when this moisture content can also be there in the tunnels and that is the reason where we talked about the tunnels uh, uh, there is a possibility of uh, uh, these corrugations. Presence of sand, now presence of sand you may say that this sand is available throughout the length of a rail. But then why on a particular rail section it is happening and not on the complete track which is passing through say a coastal area or a desert area. In both of the cases the sand will be available. So, if the sand is there and it comes and uh, gets deposited at the top here and when the wheel moves 
on the top of uh, this particular cushion which has come up on the real hard. So, the abrasive action will be there depending on the quality of that sand, depending on the amount of that sand, that abrasive action may be higher at one location, may be lesser at another and may be higher at another location and that may result in the corrugated condition. Now, when train moves on a corrugated rail track, it creates a roaring sound. This sort of a sound will come up and because of these roaring sounds which will be there, uh, these type of rail sections, they are also being termed as the roaring rails and the phenomena is the roaring of rails. So, this is happening because when this type of uh, system will be there and the wheel is moving at the top of it, here there will be some air packet and then again the wheel will come here. So, this air, because of this air packet, this roaring sound will be coming. And this causes inconvenience to the passengers, there will be rapid oxalations of rail, loosening of keys, wear of fittings, disturbances to the packing of the bellows. So, whatever the things which are being provided below, everything may get disturbed because of uh, these type of phenomena. Now, these can be removed by the grinding of the rail heads. There are two types of equipments which are used, one is the hand or the motor driven trolley. So, you might have seen a trolley which is being pulled at the top of the uh, track where maybe few persons are sitting and then uh, there are certain mechanism at the bottom of it and it will try to grind the surface, the top surface which is being corrugated, it will be grinded and being brought to a one particular level. The another one is the rail grinding train. So, you can see the rail grinding train being shown on the photograph on the right hand side. So, this rail grinding train, it moves at a speed of 30 kilometers per hour and then simultaneously it will be grinding both of the rail sections. So, there is an equipment on this side, there is an equipment on this side will keep grinding and slowly and slowly this train will keep moving at the top of the rail sections and whole of the section is going to be made free of the corrugation. So, these are the various ways in which it can be removed. Now, let us talk about the rail failure. Now, rail failure, if the rail examination indicates the defects in any part of the rail which are considered detrimental to the rail life as well as which may make the rail not usable further and may cause occurrence of a hazardous situation. Hazardous situation means there is a possibility that uh, the derailment may also happen. So, if that sort of a situation is getting to be created then that rail is being marked as failed. So, what we say is the detrimental a situation which is detrimental to the rail with respect to its usability and that usability is being talked in terms of the service life which is left and with respect to the possibility of a situation which may get created and can be termed as a hazardous. In such a condition, the remedy is to replace the affected rail on the section. That is the only remedy if it has gone beyond such serviceable limits. All rail failures should be recorded as per the standard guidelines, except the following cases if the rail failure occurs in a non rolling line. So, it is not a main line, it is not in use nowadays, so it has been abandoned or any such thing is there, then in that case uh, we need to uh, not to record that. Then non-standard or obsolete rails if they are there, so for those particular cases also it is not recorded because these have to be finally replaced, okay. these are not going to be in use. Accidental damages which may happen to the rail sections and such as wheel burns or scabbing buckling we have talked, kinks conditions we have talked, there may be a derailment, there can be abnormal slipping of the locomotive and because of the slipping of the locomotive, there will be rubbing action at the top of the rail hat and this will be also a one type of a induction of a type of a, rail, a failure here, then excessive wear, loss of the section, some material has gone out, so it is a loss in terms of the sectional area, it is in terms of the sectional weight also. 
it can be because of the corrosion, because of the battering, elongation of holes. So, there are again n number of issues due to which uh, certain things have happened and they tell you that you have to go for a replacement. So, in those replacement then uh, obviously, you cannot do anything further. Now, in most cases it is possible to determine the cause of the rail failure by visual examination. You may find that it has broken down or there are cracks which are appearing or sometimes they are minor in nature, they are very inside then you can go for an ultrasonic detection. So, USFD is what can be used here without the need of metallurgical investigation. Now, there are it means there are two classes here. When it says the failure has happened in such a manner that you have to go to check that what has happened in terms of its manufacturing condition. Is there a problem in terms of the various types of minerals which have to be used in different proportions? So, what is the composition or there is some other issue? So, that metallurgical investigation is being done in some of the cases and that again we will be discussing in one of our uh, discussion forward. These uh, uh, causes of the rail failures, the inherent defects in the rail which may be manufacturing defects as I said related to the chemical composition, there can be piping, there can be seams, there can be laps, there can be harmful segregation or guide marks. These are the different type of inherent defects which are there or there may be the defects which are coming because of the rolling action of uh, the locomotives of the wagons at the top of it. So, which may be induced by this. It may occur in terms of the flat spots in the tires, engine burns, skidding of wheels, severe braking. All of these may also induce a failure at a particular location. Then abnormal traffic, we did talk about the value say 20 tons or something. So, this affects say high loading conditions causes the stresses which are going beyond the permissible stresses or the yield limits. So, there also. Excessive corrosion of rails, this leads to the development of cracks in the regions with the high concentration of stresses. Again, corrosion and the stresses they have got, in, got correlated here. And this corrosion caused due to the various weather conditions, presence of corrosive salts, constant exposure to moisture, humidity, uh, near ash pits, in tunnels, etc. So, corrosion we have already talked about that what are the reasons due to which the corrosion of a rail can take place. So, those are situations which are being placed here. Badly maintained joints. So, maintenance is always a important issue. If it is not being done, there are loose fittings then that position will become a location where the stresses will get induced and it will, it will not be in a position to resist those stresses and eventually there may be a failure. Then defects in the welding. If the welding is being done in terms of say SWR, LWR or CWR, it can be because of the composition of the thermite weld metal which is being used for the melding or it can be the defective welding technique which is being used at that location. Both of these may also make an impact. And the improper maintenance we already did talk about it and derailments is already uh, one of the bigger reasons due to which the rails may fail. So, we can stop here, we will be continuing with the classification of rail failures and some of the rail failures in the next lecture. So, till then we uh, close this particular lecture, we will be meeting in the next lecture with the rest of the material to be covered. Thank you and bye.